What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I hope all your taco dreams come true. I am uh, here hoping to hear something about Shaq Leonard and... Um, what we're hearing, at least what that is, of course, we know that there's a meeting scheduled for this morning. Well, it's 101, so it is no longer morning in Dallas, and we have yet to hear anything definitive just yet, but we'll see what we see on that one. Uh, there's word that the there may be a second visit for him going to the Eagles. Um for a visit as well. We don't know if that is trying to force the Cowboys hand or not, but we'll deal with that in a bit. But I want to get to some earth-shattering Dak Prescott news that I literally cannot believe. This is insane hearing this news. Um, after being trashed constantly for his whole NFL career, being called a bus driver, a guy who's ass ass, um, dink and dunk, Dak trash cut. And, I mean, we could go down the litany of things that Dak Prescott has been called. Some people are actually putting him in the conversation of league MVP. And so we're listening. I'm looking here at the quarterback rankings. Now, this is the quarterback rankings here. Um, let me go back up here. This is uh, pro football is that it? Pro football, pro football um, rankings, quarterback rankings, week 13. Um, I want to just go through the top 10 and see if we can actually see if Dak Prescott cracks the top 10 and see what they're saying about his peers. At number 10, Justin Herbert. You know, he's there with Kellen Moore, so we know he's going to have a fantastic year. Although the Ravens game wasn't Justin Herbert's best performance, it remains tough to watch such a talented player continuously let down by the environment surrounding him. Unfortunately, the game against Baltimore was just another addition of the dread. Keenan Allen and Austin Egler lost fumbles on consecutive drives, and Herbert was hit with as he attempted to pass in the red zone. Down by 10 points, all the Chargers have refused to address right tackle over the past decade. I find that kind of interesting because they are looking and pointing the fingers everywhere but Josh Allen. I mean, excuse me, Justin Herbert. Have you noticed that? When the Cowboys lose, it's just Dak is trash, Dak sucks. We won't look at a game like the Cardinals and say, you have three Pro Bowl offensive linemen that you found out on Thursday that aren't going to play. We, we don't do that, but that's okay. That's okay. So number 10, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor, no. Trevor Lawrence had a big day against the Houston Texans, but the Jaguar offense still lacks a lot of explosive potentials. Many others... Um, uh, may offer. He completed two passes of more than 20 air yards, but most of his work continues to come under 10 yards because of the limitation, eliminations of the lackluster offensive line. So are we saying that he's dinking and dunking? Is that what, what we're saying? And the reason he's dinking and dunking is his offensive line? Okay, I, I'm just checking. I'm asking for a friend. You know, you, you can tell I'm salty. You can tell I'm salty here as we go through the top 10. Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen did just about everything he could against the Philadelphia Eagles in the rain. Uh, it should be against the Eagles and the officials. But it wasn't enough in the end. James Bradbury made an outstanding play, but Allen was also counted for four total touchdowns and added 81 yards to the ground to top his 339 yards to the air. He was outstanding, just like many other overtime games in his career. It just hasn't been enough. That one's hard to argue with because he did play a great game uh, against the Eagles and the officials. Brock Purdy. Now, some people have Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott on the outside looking in at the QB race. So it's interesting to see Brock Purdy at seven. Brock Purdy had a bit of ho-hum performance against Seattle, mostly because 49ers were never uh, forced to press uh, things offensively. They were up 24-3 at halftime. Purdy threw a poor ball over the middle that was returned by Seattle for six the other way. But he avoided disaster since his uh, horrific three-game skid before the bye week. So wait a minute. 
he had three games that were bad. I I missed that. I I didn't I didn't hear that. Okay. All right. So here we go. C.J. Stroud, Texas fan specifically, um, Eastside Herald. C.J. Stroud is better than Dak Prescott. The AFC South might be fun over the next decade if C.J. Stroud and Trevor Lawrence continue to play at this level. Stroud had another big day, throwing for 304 yards while continuing to thrive over the middle of the field. All right, so Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Um, da, 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 da. Lamar Jackson has been great this season, but only scoring 20 points against the Los Angeles Chargers defense is a bit of a black eye. It may take some time for this offense to find its shape since losing Mark Andrews. However, with playmakers like Odell Beckham Jr. and Zay Flowers, this offense should be just fine. Okay, so there you have it. That, that's, that's number five to number 10. Of course, you know, with Dak Prescott, nobody thinks that he's, the, you know, some people will argue that he's not a top 15 quarterback. So now we're in the top five, of course. So at number four, we got Tua. It's nice to see Jalen Waddell get involved in the Miami offense after feeling like a missing person for most of the season. When Miami offense was at its very best in 2022, it was Tariq Hill and Waddell. They were racking up 20-plus targets between the two of them. Tua's nature will always get him into trouble from time to time as a passer, but limiting turnovers on offense is crucial for this unit as explosive as Miami. Wow, okay. It's hard to argue. Tua's having a great year. He's got some great weapons, and, and he's doing the most with them. Jalen Hurts, number three. Monday Night Football game was a tale of two halves for Jalen. Uh, he was not great in the first half, and the offense suffered because of it. He's a wor- wonderful in the second half of the Eagles, scored points in five of six drives, four touchdowns, and a field goal. Definitely, he is a second-half player. So we have two quarterbacks left in the, the, the rankings right now. So let's go to number two, Dak Prescott. What? Dak? Little old Dak Prescott? Dak Prescott drafted in the fourth round? Nobody has put, to be- put together a string of performance this season by the way that Dak Prescott has since playing the Los Angeles Rams. In five games, he's thrown 17 touchdowns and two interceptions. He has the played three bad defenses, well. He has, absolutely. But he's also playing clean, consistent, and confident football for an offense that has done a dramatic 180 since the bye week. And numero uno, the GOAT. Pat Mahomes will always remain. Things won't always be perfect because of issues on the Chiefs roster, but Mahomes is the best player on the planet. He deserves to remain on top based on the respects he deserves. So when I say it was earth-shattering, earth-shattering that they're actually ranking Dak Prescott as the number two quarterback in the NFL... It's hard to believe. It, it honestly is hard to believe that people are actually beginning to give the Cowboys some credit. Now, again, the knock will be or the asterisk beside it will be it was all against bad teams. Well, here's the opportunity for Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys to shut everybody up. For the rest of the season, if they can go and take care of Seattle and Philadelphia and um, – take care of Josh Allen and Tua. All the quarterbacks that are in here that are in the tops, they're playing. They're playing Josh Allen. They're playing Jalen Hurts. They're playing Tua. So this is an opportunity for the Cowboys to seize the day and put themselves up there. I don't know about you, but I love that. All right, good people. As always, you know I appreciate you. And um, I will, I'm going to be going back to doing some more work here at the Red Brick House. And I will see you soon. Unbelievable. Can't believe it. Dak Prescott 